In this lecture, we're going to discuss the hydrolysis of a poly polyester, uh, and we're going to find, we're going to try and find the monomers. If you're given a polyester chain, we're going to look at the polyester chain. We're going to try and figure out what the monomers are going to be. So, hydrolysis of a polyester. Hydrolysis literally means it's the it's the breakdown of a compound or decomposition of a compound. So, it's the decomposition of a molecule or compound or a polymer by the reaction by reaction with water now the reaction of a polyester and the hydrolysis of a polyester the decomposition of a polyester with water is very slow so what uh, generally occurs is that the conditions that are generally used are dilute acids or dilute alkalis are used so it could be dilute plus some heat would be required so these are the conditions that are normally used for the breakdown of a polyester chain in back into its monomers so hydrolysis of a poly polyester is the decomposition by the reaction with water now this breakdown is exactly the reverse of formation which was the which was condensation polymerization you can i've drawn a polyester chain uh, the boxes could represent anything but a polyester chain has a chain has these ester links so you have all these ester links linking the monomers together now when you're decomposing or breaking down or hydrolyzing a polyester chain what you're going to do is you're going to do the exact reverse what, what uh, and you're going to break these polyester chains uh, from their ester links so the ester links are going to break down the ester links were the ones that were connecting the two uh, uh, two monomers together so you break down these ester links so any ester link that you that that you find in a polyester you break them down so these are all ester links remember ester links were c double bond o and O that were formed. These were ester groups, ester links. So once I've broken them down, let's look at this molecule. So you have uh, a box and it has two oxygens attached to it. And let's look at this part of the molecule, the monomer that uh, was linking together. So you have another box, another part of a molecule, which could be anything and it has C double bond O on both sides now what you're going to do is if you have a single bond O you make it into an alcohol so this should be add the hydrogens to it and if you have C double bond O after you've broken the ester link you're going to make it into a carboxylic acid by adding OH which basically means that you're adding water back into the Molecule. So this is hydrolysis. You're basically reacting it with water. The water uh, splits into two parts. One uh, one group is OH that gets added to the C double bond O, and one part is H with, which gets added to the single bond O. So you end up with the same exact monomers. One is a diol, and the other one is a dicarboxylic dicarboxylic acid. So you can relate uh, this to the synthesis of polyesters or the condensation reaction in which polyesters were formed. So this is exactly the opposite, the exact reverse of how we actually formed polyesters in the first place. Let's look at this second example. Again, I have a polyester chain. You have these ester links that I've uh, highlighted. I have uh, drawn them with a black marker. So these are your ester links uh, that are joining and connecting all the monomers. What you're going to do if, if this uh, polyester is heated with dilute acid or dilute alkali, what would happen is that all the ester links are going to break down. So you break this ester link into two parts, you break this ester links ester link into two parts. So you end up breaking all these ester links and I've broken those ester links. One monomer that I'm going to get is this one. It's going to look something like this. There's going to be a C and it would have two methyl groups attached to it. 
and on both sides I have C double bond O on one side and I have a C double bond O on the other side the other part would look something like this it's this one over here so this other part would be you would have C there would be two hydrogens to it and there would be two oxygens around it now what you're going to do you're going to do the same when you're you're adding water now so uh, next to the single bond O you add hydrogens this would make it into a diol that's your that's one of the monomers and if you have C double bond O you add OH on both sides so that would make it into a dicarboxylic acid so that's your other monomer so you have a dicarboxylic acid that's your second monomer so these are your two monomers that ended up making that particular polyester so if you have a polyester molecule and you want to figure out what uh, are the two monomers that make up this polyester molecule you search for the ester links all these ester links and you break those ester links into two parts once you have broken them into two parts if there's a C double bond O add an OH next to it C double bond O add an OH next to it like I have done over here and if there's single bond O on both sides if you look at this monomer over here you add an H only what that would do is it's going to make it into a diol so these two are your monomers that are making up this polyester chain now I'm going to discuss some of the problems with hydrolysis if you're hydrolyzing it with a dilute alkali now uh, we can pick any alkali for example I am using an OH now one problem with hydrolyzing it with a dilute alkali is that alkalis react with acids now if you look carefully you have this uh, uh, polyester chain and what you did when you were hydrolyzing it you ended up breaking all the ester links when you break these ester links uh, you get two molecules one has cetyl bond O on both sides and the other one has uh, oxins on both sides so uh, you added hydrogen on one side to make it into an alcohol and you added OH on the other one to make it into a dicarboxylic acid now there's one problem and that problem is that it's an acid and remember that acids react with alkalis so this molecule over here let's highlight this this molecule over here would react with excess alkali so if you're hydrolyze, hydrolyzing it with an alkali so it reacts with the excess NaOH and ends up forming a salt so it reacts with excess NaOH and forms a salt so remember the carboxylic acid would not be formed because although it would be formed but as soon as this is formed this molecule would end up reacting with NaOH and it would end up forming a salt so what type of product would be formed uh, this would be your molecule it would have a carboxylic acid group on both sides but that carboxylic acid group would end up forming a salt a sodium salt if you if you're using any OH as an alkali if you use KOH a potassium salt would be formed so this is the dicarboxylic acid salt that would be formed instead of the dicarboxylic acid so remember not to form the dicarboxylic acid if you're reacting it or hydrolyzing it with aqueous alkali so to sum it up the dicarboxylic acid formed would end up forming a salt it would react with the excess NaOH so instead of getting a dicarboxylic acid you're going to get a salt of that very same dicarboxylic acid